Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be creating a beautiful realistic portrait of a peacock using watercolor pencils. I have my set of 40 Haran Dosh Supercolor watercolor pencils. It comes with such a great variety, pretty much all the colors you would need for a project like this. So I start by selecting the colors that I think I'll need for the project, including a bunch of blues and a couple of greens, black and white, pink and brown. I have my favorite paper. This is Fabriano Artistico 140 pound cold pressed, and it's a block of five by seven inch watercolor paper. And I'm gonna start with the background today. I'm gonna to be using this really nice light green. It's kind of a yellowish green for the background. And I'm just gently coloring in the entire background using this light green pencil. You'll notice I'm not gonna to press too hard or fill in all of those gaps in the paper. Once we apply water, the water will do that for us. So really just be gentle at this point and just start to layer your colors really gently on the surface of the paper. And then for my next layer, I'm going in with black and coloring in the corners a little bit and with a dark green. And this is gonna create kind of a vignette effect with the painting. I'm trying to imitate that blurred out background that I see in the photo. And you can see it's sort of got these round blurry shapes. And so I'm coloring in where I see those darker values just imitating that, of course not perfectly, but getting the colors as close as I can. Where I see warmer color temperatures, I'm applying this light brown in some of those areas too. Now I'm grabbing a synthetic brush. This is my Richeson Gray Matters Water Media brush. It's a size six round brush, and it's a nice stiff bristly brush, and I'm just gently painting water all across the background. And this is my favorite part. Wow, you can really see the magic happening here. It's just so much fun seeing how the water is instantly activating that paint. I'm using some scrubbing circular motions with my brush and just carefully avoiding the peacock itself, just painting the background all around the silhouette of our peacock. Gently blend and scrub, move your brush in all different directions. You wanna sort of imitate those circular shapes you see in the blurry photograph. You'll wanna work fairly quickly when you're adding the water because it can dry out fairly fast if you're in a dry environment like I am anyway. And so work fast and try not to let any hard edges form while you blend all those colors together. Now I'm grabbing some paint directly from my pencil using the tip of my round brush and the tip of my light blue pencil. And this is a really great way to apply color on wet surfaces without disrupting the paper too much. Sometimes when you pencil directly wet on wet, it can actually be kind of hard on your paper. So this is a great way to apply really vibrant color directly from your pencil without pressing down on the paper. Now moving on to the peacock, I'm applying a light layer of blue on the crest of the head and a little bit of green and teal. These are all colors that I see in the photograph. So I'm just gently starting to suggest those with my pencils and the black outline of the eye. I just wanna get a couple of colors down so I can see how much darker I need to go once I add the water. I'm using this nice light periwinkle blue. And then this ultramarine color is probably the one I'll be using the most for the peacock. And I'm gonna use this to color all around the outside of the peacock's body where I see the darker blue values. So once again, I'm just gently coloring. I'm not trying to press too hard or apply tons of color just yet. We'll have lots of opportunities to layer that color later. Now for the center of the body, I'm using more of that light blue instead of the dark blue and then switching back to my dark blue to reinforce some of those darker values around the outer edges of the peacock. I'm using this really light, vibrant green for the center of the head. This will be just a nice base layer. We're gonna go much darker in this area, but for now it's good to get some color on there. Now I'm switching to my silver black velvet size four round brush, and I'm gently starting to add water to the top of the head. You'll notice I'm painting around some little white highlights. The top of the head is very textured and very bumpy, so I'm slowing down here and painting really carefully. To get a much more vibrant color, I'm once again taking my wet brush and scraping paint directly off the surface of the tip of my pencil and applying that to the painting. I get a lot more control with the detail if I'm using a tiny little round brush than I do by just drawing directly with the pencil. So this is just such an awesome technique. It's something that was actually suggested to me by a viewer. So thank you for that. I use this technique all the time now. 
I'm doing the same thing with my black pencil, just touching my brush to the pencil and applying that paint to the painting using the brush, darkening up those values and painting in these tiny details using that tiny tip of my round brush. If I have a little extra black paint on my brush, I water it down slightly and I'm painting in those gray details in the beak of the bird. Make sure you have a water jar on hand and a paper towel for blotting, just like you would if you're watercolor painting with regular watercolors. Now for the crest. I'm filling in that background where it's peeking in between with the greens and then using a little bit of the black that's on my brush to paint those details in between. Applying more color as needed and then blurring it out with the water. This really is such a fun and refreshing technique to do if you've been painting with watercolors for a while and you just wanna see the magic happen again. Watercolor pencils are so fun. They're pure magic. Just give it a try. All right, now I'm adding some more water to the head and starting to blend these initial colors that we put down with that first layer. Blotting in more color as needed and just blending it all out with water. You can see where we pressed a little harder with the pencil and applied more layers. The paint is definitely darker where we add the water. And in the center of the body, it's much lighter. Just gently scrubbing out that paint and then where I need to go more vibrant, I'm grabbing paint directly from the tip of my pencil. Oh, and guys, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button if you find this video helpful. It really helps me out as a creator to continue making great free content like this just for you guys. So I appreciate it when you like the video. I'm adding more and more color and just continuing to apply water to smooth it out. Build up your layers gradually. And of course, you can use your pencils on the wet paper if you want to. There's no right or wrong way to do this. And to add feather details, you can use the tip of your round brush and just use short, quick brush strokes just like you would with fur. Adding more layers. I found that it was difficult to get vibrant enough for my taste, so I had to add a lot of layers of color to get it dark enough. Now for the head, we need to go much darker with that black, so I'm coloring that in carefully. Trying to follow my drawing underneath and be really careful around the eyes. Adding some more of that dark teal, it's such a pretty color, and a little bit of green underneath the head. We're just starting to build up those layers slowly. Now I'm using the tip of my round brush and starting to paint some of those details in with water and adding some more blue right near the eye and again, smoothing that with water. You're not done drawing with the sketch. You actually are gonna be continuing to draw all the time that you're painting. You're just drawing with your round brush. Think of it that way. Build up those layers slowly. Start to add texture. There's so much texture and detail on this bird's head and it's a lot of fun just seeing what you're capable of with that tiny little brush. I'm encircling the eyes with a really light gray and then grabbing some more of that dark ultramarine blue Again, using that technique of grabbing paint directly from the tip of the pencil and applying it to the paper. Here I'm using some more of that teal color, going really wet with this. At this point, the paper is quite wet, and so when you drop in the paint, it will instantly activate and you'll see all the pigment in its full glory. Just keep adding details, layer by layer. Here I'm adding some more black and going even darker with the head and adding lots of these tiny little interlooping details. I'm using these little circular motions almost to create the suggestion of the feathers on the head. And you can use the tip of your brush and just dab really quickly. That also creates texture. If you're not sure about your brush strokes or how to create different looks, you can use a scrap piece of paper and practice your brush strokes ahead of time just so you know what you wanna use for your painting. I'm darkening up those nostrils with my black color. And then I'm using a little bit of light brown to fill in the inside of the eye. I'm just filling in the underside. The, the upper portion of the eye is mostly in highlight, so I'm avoiding that and just outlining the eye with my black. I am pressing harder here so I can get more pigment right on the paper. Make sure you don't have too much water on your brush when you're doing little details like this, otherwise you'll end up with just a wet mess. So be careful to control the amount of water using your paper towel. 
I'm adding a darker brown on the inside of the eye and letting the colors just blend naturally wet and wet. And then I'm applying a little bit of light pink around the areas that are white and filling in some more details around the eye. This area just above the beak has a lot of texture too, so I'm using those same really tiny controlled brush strokes to create that texture. Just adding these final little details. And then for the crest, I'm adding ultramarine again, scrubbing that on gently, just with one nice light layer initially, and then filling it in with my water. You can see I'm using a really light, kind of circular brush stroke, and then painting gently in between those little stems, going darker with another addition of dark blue, and then using the tip of my brush, scraping the paint off of my pencil and adding those dark black details to the crest. This is such a great technique to use if you're trying to paint tiny details and the pencil is just not tiny enough for you. Filling in those shadow shapes with a dark brown. And then for my last detail, I'm using my white pencil and my really light green pencil and just adding little dots inside of that black shape under the head. And these are suggesting the really shiny, beautiful feathers that are catching the light and then filling in a little darker once again with my black pencil and adding some tiny pink hints in the areas that are white on the peacock, such as on the crest and around the eyes. And there's our finished peacock. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like. If you try it, tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see it. And check out this other video on painting with watercolor pencils.